we're just gonna analyze forward and keep going. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna move this out here, analyze again. Okay, that should be good. Uh, next thing we want to do is we're going to create a null layer. Go to uh, go to your uh, layer, right click, new, null object, and this is what um, we're going to uh, either attach our null to the tracking or drop our tracking data into the null, however, however you want to put it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go to edit target, click on it, and uh, with layer you choose null 3 and OK and all you do is hit hit apply and ask apply dimensions X and Y yep I want to apply those and there you go null object is now attached to um, the tracking now like I said before that little X is where your um, object is going to attach to because now you can see where I had originally moved that little X thingy uh, this at, fir at first it stayed with a tracker and then I moved it down a little bit there it goes and then I moved it down again there you go that's why you want to keep your uh, uh, that little tracking point it's called an attach point um, with the actual track point because um, if you don't you're, you're, it's not going to follow that's that's the whole whole th whole reason you're tracking. Um, so since we got that out of the way, um, let me just go in and show you some extra goodies here that you're <laughs> you're going to need to know. Um, you're going to be pulling your hair out. Okay, and if you want to redo your tracking, your when you apply your tracking to your null object or your object, it automatically brings your brings you to your composition um, uh, window. In order to redo your tracking you have to go to the layer window which has your tracking information. Um, so now we're there and we can zoom in. Let's see what we got here. Okay and I'm just going to uh, bring in my um, timeline here so I can see the keyframes. Um, and you can manually adjust the keyframes two ways. Well, not really manual. One way isn't really manual. You're still analyzing, but okay, there we go. That's easier to see. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And the reason it's not getting a clean track is because um, there's pixels here that are not quite red, so the tracking is looking at those two. So, which sucks because it's not getting a good track. Um, so there's there's two ways of doing it. You can take the second frame, and if your arrow is on the inside frame and it's white, you don't want that. You want it to be black. Move a track. You'll notice the uh, the, the track point uh, shifted itself. Take the little white crosshair, move it to where it's supposed to be, right in the middle. And you can probably just analyze forward, see what happens. Click and grab again, make sure the arrow is black, readjust, analyze again, readjust, and make sure the little crosshair is in the middle. Or you can just page down and just, you don't have to analyze, just page down and move the, uh, the tracker. Page down, move the tracker. Page down, move the tracker. Or page up. There we go. Move the tracker. Page up. Move the tracker. Page up. Page up. I just noticed something fairly interesting. When the tracker might go off, but it looks like the attach point actually stays close to the where you originally was tracking. I never knew that. That's interesting. Okay, so that's that's how you manually adjust, and that's the part which becomes a pain in the ass because you've got to go to every freaking keyframe. So if you're doing 30 seconds, that's a whole freaking lot of keyframes. Um, but if you want a good good track, that's what you got to do. So I th think I pretty much covered everything. Um, 
I gotta shut down here for a second. Um, just want to see how much time I've got here and um, you know, see what see what time it is. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, and the oh, let me just make sure I'm back. Yep, I'm back. Okay, I couldn't remember if I if I pressed resume or not. Um, okay, yeah, I am. I'm back. Um, tracking for what we're doing. Um, tracking is. 90% of it. It's the biggest pain in the ass, probably where you're going to be spending most of your time. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm, I've got my headphones on while I'm... It's cool because I got headphones on, I'm listening to music on my headphones while I'm while I'm doing this tutorial, and you guys can't hear a single thing. And uh, uh, Thompson Twins Hold Me Now is coming out. a freaking awesome song. I, I, I think it was since like 7th grade when it came out. But anyway, um, just dated myself. I'm sorry. I'm Yeah. Anyway. Um, so... Pretty much, I showed you uh, the general basics of tracking, and the 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 fun and joy it'll bring your life when you do it. Okay, now let's move on to uh, um, pretty much the um, the fun part. Yeah, let me get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, so I'm going to get out of my tracking, go into uh, my workspace, and I have the area uh, that I tracked. Um, I had it. Uh, um, I basically set up my set up some markers um, showing me where I want to the the main the main part of the movie that I wanted to track from. So it's from the beginning when he jumped out into the courtyard, and it's like the first slice. All right, there's the courtyard scene, and just as it flips to first big slice in blood, that's where I started, and set another marker at the very end when it cuts out. And in there, um, I had to find a good point to where I wanted uh, Sam to come in. And it's right at this little cement um, uh, courtyard lamp fixture type thingy. Um, so I, I tracked from when this just started to come in all the way to the end. And so that's what I have Sam attached to. And it's not a clean track by any means, just because the, um, like I said before, it's it's grainy, it's blurry, and it was hard to get a fix on a good point to track. Um, I did most of it manually, and even going frame to frame, it was it was rough. It was it was rough going. Ah, oh, okay, now, I'm glad that part's over. Um, so let's go oh, one uh, composition up, and I already have Sam attached. And as you can, you know, tell that it's, it's still not clean. He's kind of bouncing up and down still, by whatever. Um, so he's not quite attached. And uh, when, if you notice, when your object is attached, first becomes attra attached to your null object. Um, it's not where you want it to be, and unfortunately. Oh my God! I didn't show I didn't show you guys how to how to attach. Um, okay, when you have your uh, tracking data and it's now plugged into your null object, what we're going to do is hit P on your null object, and the object that the main object that you want to be moving around, um, you want to select that layer. Hit P on that also, so you have position of both the null object and uh, the null layer and the object you want moved. Okay, and we're going to go to the object that you want moved. Push the hit the Alt key, click on a posi uh, position uh, a stopwatch, and it'll bring up your expression controls. Um, third one in is that little uh, squiggly line, or or uh, um, swirly line. Um, that's the the pick whip. You know, grab that pick whip, pick whip it to the position of the null, and there you go. That's all you got. 